In this video, we're returning to vector functions of curves, but we're going to be talking about the component functions of the curve. So let's scroll down until we get a new Sage field here. There we go. And let's go to our wiki page and scroll down, and we're going to be doing example three and four. So we want to extract the component functions of a vector function of a curve. A uh, key thing is that arrays in SAGE start with zero. So the first component, according to SAGE, is the zero component. So you have to subtract one. Okay, so projecting a 3D parametric curve onto the XY plane. So here's our SAGE. Let's copy it. Put it in our SAGE field here. So we're declaring the, the variable as if we're starting from scratch. Here's the same helix, vector, double parenthesis, sine t, cosine t, t. And now we're getting the, the 2D vector function where we say r2 is equal to vector, double parenthesis, and then r bracket 0 is the first function, sine of t, and then r bracket 1 is the second function, cosine of t. So we have effectively made z into 0 projected onto the x, y axis. Now we're going to plot this, but we're going to call it an object. If you call your plot by an object name, you must use the command show in order to see it. So p2 equals parametric plot. r2 is the name of our function. Our range is from minus 2 pi to 2 pi, which actually will give us the circle twice, just so we know. And this time, instead of using color equal to red, we have used the other command, RGB color, which goes from red, green, blue. And the numbers in here have to be between 0 and 1. Our thickness is 2. We're working with a curve. And this is the aspect ratio command if you want everything to just be the same size, 1. And then we need a new, we have hit enter here. And this is a new command, show P2 figure size equal to 3. So let's hit evaluate. And here is the circle. It actually has gone around twice. Now the next command that we wanted to see was how can we do this, plot a 2D curve in 3D. And it appears that if you add a plot of a 3D function, it will force a 3D plot. Um, you can always plot a 2D function in 3D just by adding z equal to 0 as the third component. You can also not see the 3D vector plot by making its opacity equal to zero. We will try that. Okay, let's copy all our directions here and go to our page. We we'll declare a variable, our 3D vector function, the helix, our 2D vector function, the projection. And now P3 is our parametric plot in 3D. So it's R and then T is the parameter. It just goes from minus two pi to two pi. Our color is purple, our thickness is 3, and our aspect ratio is now 3, 3, 1 again. So we're smooshing the z-axis. And then we're putting our two-dimensional one into three-dimensional, although it doesn't look like it here. It looks like we're plotting a 2D plot. So R2, and then the range is from minus 2 pi to 2 pi, color equal to red, thickness equal to 5, aspect ratio like this. And now we have show P3 and using the symbol plus, P2 and 3. So let's evaluate that. And of course it's a little bit too big, but we can see it. So here is the 2D plot, and we can rotate. The nice thing about 3D plots, of course, is that we can rotate them. Now let's say we didn't want to see this big plot, but we still need it in order to get the 3D plot. What we do is go back up to where P3 is, and we put in a fourth option, opacity, equal to zero. That means you don't see it. Opacity goes between zero and one, but at, at opacity equal to zero, we will not see it. So evaluate, and we see only the 2D plot. The 3D plot is in there, but with opacity equal to zero, it's invisible.